thank you this evening. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. In the mighty name of Jesus, we ask that you speak to us as we get into your word. Minister the word of life, the word of hope. In Jesus' holy and precious name, amen. amen. I want to thank God for the time of prayer. I'm going to be tighter today. Um, I want to go for the prayer that was said by Pastor Kirkman. We give God glory, honor, and praise. Amen. Amen. We have been talking about Occupy Till I Come, the anointing. And today we want to, oh, you may be seated, please. Today we just want to talk about getting ourselves ready as we enter into 2022, as we enter into the new year, so we can get the best out of the new year. And so we'll be looking at a few keys, what I refer to as vital keys that we need as we step into the new year for us to succeed and to and to excel. We have been told that, the, or we are made to understand that the personality of Jesus, who Jesus is, is what will help us or lead us to get into heaven. That is knowing Jesus as your Lord and Savior. So your relationship with the Lord leads you to heaven. But the principles in the word of the Lord is what is going to make us succeed upon the face of this earth. The principles make us succeed. As long as we are upon the face of this earth, we have needs, we have challenges, we have issues we have to deal with, we have things we have to do, and we need principles, godly principles from the word of the Lord to help us to be able to navigate our lives through this um, period of our existence upon the face of the earth. However, our goal is to spend eternity with the Lord, so our relationship with the Lord also is very, very important. So when I receive Jesus, I know I'm on my way to spend eternity with the Lord in heaven. But I need the principles of the Lord to be able to succeed upon the face of this earth. And the Bible is full of principles, vital principles, that we need to succeed. Now, this is not, um, I don't want to be misunderstood, but they say, they say that if you, if you keep doing the same thing that you do every single time and hope to see change or hope to see a different result, then you are not being wise. So they say it is foolish to do the same thing and expect different results. So in other words, if we are looking for different results than what we have been experiencing, then we need to do things differently. So we are going to look at a few principles from Bible point of view that we need. But I want to just say these things so you have them and keep them. Um, the key, some vital keys that I think we need, the key of preparation as we step into 2022, I know that the year has almost ended, but it's not too late to prepare the key of preparation. Another one is the mouth. The mouth is not just an organ for eating. The mouth, the mouth is the organ that will determine whether you succeed or fail. Your mouth is an organ that will determine whether you live or die. The Bible says death and life are in the power of the tongue. So it is not just for tasting food or for eating or for talking. It is an organ that you need for you to be able to succeed or to live. So your, your mouth can either make you live or can either make you die? There are so many scriptures that the Bible says, and we'll look at them at the appropriate time. The next one is your money. The money we receive, whether it is through a gift or at the end of the month, the income that we receive is not only supposed to help us pay bills and to live or to dress up. The money we receive, no matter how small it is, is a vital key that we need for us to be able to rise above our challenges or for us to be able to succeed. So in other words, you are not rich because you are receiving more money than somebody else, or you are not poor because you are receiving less money than somebody else, but no matter how much we receive, the money that we have is a vital tool, or is a vital key that we can use to go to the heights that we want to get to in the will of God. And then the last one is prayer. Now, I, I have put them in this order. doesn't mean that some are more important than the other, but basically what I'm going to say that these are when I refer to as four vital keys, and, 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 and under them, we have so many things that we can talk about. In terms of your mouth, your finances, your tithes, your offerings, and giving. Three areas that talks about the, uh, the, your money. Talk about your mouth, what you used to say, the state of your heart, the state of your mind. They are all determining factors in what comes out of your mouth, your prayer life. And today we're going to start with preparation so we see how far we can go see whether we can touch something else the key of preparation and i'm saying here and don't misunderstand me prayer is very very important 
But I said the first and most important key for you to succeed in 2022 is the key of preparation. Don't just walk into the new year without preparation. Preparation is the most important. We need to prepare to enter the new year. 31st December, I always say, is a gateway into 2022. It's a gateway to a new year. Every 12 midnight is a gate into the new day. So when we get up in the night, in the 30 p.m., and we begin to pray into the day, then we are determining for us what is going to happen in the new day. In other words, we are using our prayer power to be able to determine what will happen in the new day. So if you pray through the night into the new day, from let's say 11 30 p.m. to 12 or 12.15, 12 then you are determining what is going to happen in the day. We can command the day by that. So in the same way, the first time we meet, and, and most people say we are crossing over, but what is actually happening is that we are at the gate, and our prayer and the things we say is what is going to determine what is going to happen in the new year. So these are very, very important keys that we want to look at for us to have a meaningful and successful new year in 2022. And today we are focusing on the key of preparation. And it's uh, very, very important that we focus on this particular key and so that we prepare. And once again, I want to say that I know that the year is almost ended. So what do you mean talking about preparation? It is not too late. It can be late, but it's not too late for you to prepare into the new year. We're going to look at a few things that we, we can need to do, but I need to base our discussion on scripture. The first scripture we are reading is Acts chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. Acts chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. Acts chapter 2, right? The book of Acts is the fifth book in the New Testament. It's the fifth book. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Then we have the Acts of the Apostles. Now, this is what happened in Acts chapter 2. We are reading only verses 1 and 2. The Bible says, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. Now why am I reading this in reference to preparation? We need to understand that many of us are expecting some suddenness in our lives. Suddenly, suddenness. But we need to understand that the suddenness of God, the suddenness that God brings into the lives of people, are as a result of preparation or acts. For example, Paul and Silas prayed and they sang praises unto the Lord in the priest. The Bible says, suddenly. So suddenly are, are preceded by preparation, by things that we do. We just don't walk into suddenly. So maybe I walk about and say, oh, I'm hoping that one day suddenly I just somebody just come and give me a car, somebody just come and give me a bus, or come and give me a new house. That's okay, but preparation is groundwork or is the basis for suddenness in our lives. And I'm going to just give a few quotes of people. First one is by Abraham Lincoln. He said, give me six hours to chop down a tree, and I will spend the first four sharpening the axe. The axe. Give me six hours to chop down a tree, and I will spend the first four sharpening the axe. So, in other words, he's going to cut the tree, and if it were to be me, i just go ahead and start cutting the tree. But he says that I will spend four hours. So it means that the sharper the axe is, the easier it's going to be for me to cut the tree. So preparation for what we are going to do is very, very, very important. Once again, I want to say that don't just enter into 2022 as if you're walking from into one minute to the next minute, or one day to the other. You need to sit down and prepare and ask yourself, what do I hope? To achieve where do i hope to get to what do i hope to become as i get in 2022 and as christians this includes both our spiritual life and our physical life and i'm giving just a general discussion and a general over overview somebody also said proper pre preparation prevents poor performance proper preparation prevents poor performance proper preparation prevents poor performance there's this one also by a, a man named bobby onsa and he said, success is where preparation and opportunity meet. So for you to be successful, then you must prepare for the opportunity. Because if an opportunity comes and you are not prepared, there's no way you can take advantage of it. So I met this young man, and he said, I'm looking for a job. I wish I can drive for Uber. Oh, I said, that's a good idea. Do you know how to drive? No. Now, there's no way you can get into a professional driving business if you don't know how to drive. And even if you know how to drive, you need to experience experience. So an opportunity can come, but if you're not prepared for it, you can take advantage of it. 
So success is where preparation and opportunity meet. So we have been living all these years just working from one day to the other, one week to the other, one month to the other, one year to the other. Then this is the time for me to say that sit down and say, look, today is the 16th of December. I've got 15 days or two weeks before the year ends. What do I hope to see, to achieve, to experience, or to be in 2022 by the grace of the Lord? And you sit down and you begin to plan. And please, I don't need less to say, or uh, maybe I don't need to say this, but what I'm trying to, uh, the, the point I'm making is that you need to have, you can never do that without having a notebook and a pen. There's no way you can do that. So it's in my mind, look, your vision and your dream and your goals cannot be your mind. You need to write them on paper. I want to improve my prayer life. I want to improve my relationships. I want to lose weight. Whatever you want to do. And I'm making it as practical, practical as possible. So in the scripture that we read, in Acts chapter 2, verses 1 and 2, the Bible says that when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were in one court in one place. Well, somebody would just say, oh, they were just praying and the Holy Ghost came down. But if you look through scripture, you find that this time is being talked about was in three and a half years in preparation. Jesus picked the disciples and trained them and monitored them and lectured them and gave them practical and physical training for three and a half years. And then when he died and rose again, they were with him and then for, the, uh, for 40 days. And then when he went and ascended to heaven, the Bible says for 10 days, because the Pentecost was 50th day after the uh, feast of the Passover. So for 10 days, they were in a room doing nothing but just fasting and praying. One room. That's where they all were, before the Holy Ghost came down. So we shouldn't just think that gifts or anointing or things are just going to come just like that. It might be preceded by a time of preparation. That's why I put this scripture there. So the Holy Ghost came suddenly because of three and a half years of preparation and ten continuous days of prayer in the upper room. So preparation gives you confidence. The confidence you need to be able to do the things you want to do. Jesus prepared for ministry. Jesus was born at the age of 12 when he was in the temple. He was asking questions and, and giving and talking about things that the priest could not even understand. Yet he didn't step into ministry at, until the age of 30. And before he even started, he went on a time of 40 days fasting and praying to be able to deal with the tempter, to deal with the devil, to overcome before he stepped in into ministry. The first Adam lost, the second Adam had to overcome. So he prepared with fasting and prayer, 40 days and 49, before he stepped into ministry. We look at the life of Paul. I'm going to be very interesting. The life of Paul. Paul wrote a scripture in Galatians chapter 1, verses 15 to 18. And I want you to listen to that scripture very carefully. He said, But when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb, and called me by his grace, to reveal his son in me, that I might preach him among the hidden, Immediately I conferred not with flesh and blood, neither went I to Jerusalem, neither went I up to Jerusalem to them which were apostles before me, but I went into Arabia and returned again unto Damascus. Then after three years I went up to Jerusalem to see Peter, and I bore him 15 days. Now what the scripture simply means is that when Peter Paul was called, he didn't go to the disciples who were before him. He went fasting and praying, so that what we believe he did in the deserts of Arabia. He spent time fasting and praying, seeking the faith of God, and reading the scriptures. Because those days they didn't have the New Testament. And so Paul says that the things that I'm writing to you, I'm writing them to you because the Holy Ghost taught me. He taught me directly. I received them by revelation. So Paul didn't go quoting what somebody has said. He said things that he had received from the Lord. How did he start his ministry? By a period of preparation. So in the same way you want to succeed in 2022, Beginning from now, enter into a period of preparation. Say, so, Lord, I should have started already, but it's not too late. I want to prepare. Because what you prepare for is what you are going to get. Preparation will make us ready for the opportunities as and when they come. Preparation will make you ready for the opportunity. So invest prayer into the coming year is a type of preparation. Invest in prayer into the coming year. Praying. Praying against things that will oppose you. Praying against Plans that Satan will set in place to be able to try to defeat you or to distract you or to delay you or to, or to frustrate you. Our prayer can stop those things. Jesus told Peter, says, Simon, Simon, Satan has come and asked permission that he will sift you as wheat. 
But I pray that your faith fail not. So he prayed for Peter before Peter faced the temptation. So Peter was able, although he failed, he was able to rise again because Jesus invested prayer into Peter. So we need to understand that when we invest prayer into the new year, it will be able to stop things that Satan wants to do. That even though he may try to do it, we will come out strong. We will come out victorious. So invest prayer into the coming year. Speak the word, the Bible. Speak the word into the coming year. Read the Bible and quote it and, and speak it. Say, I promise into the coming year. I'll be above only and not beneath. Read the Bible and speak into the coming year. It's all part of your preparation. And then plan and prepare for the coming year. That's what we are focusing on. The sequence of creation shows God is a God of plan and purpose. Some people say that God just does things. No, he just doesn't do anything. We have come to understand by science, because what science is doing is that science is discovering what God has already done. So we come to understand by science that everything revolves around light. That light is the center of the universe. Everything is about light. Trees survive by light. Humans survive by light. We all need light. We all need light to be able to survive. So you realize that when God created the heavens and the earth, the first thing he called said, let there be light. Because light is the center of the universe. And let there be light. Before he, 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 he created Adam and Eve, he had created a, a garden. Where Adam's needs, everything that he needed, was going to be available. He had created food for Adam. He said, all these you shall have for food, the, the best of the earth. You have authority, dominion over them. And then there were plants in the garden for Adam's pleasure. For Adam's satisfaction, for Adam's fulfillment. So you find that God is a God of plan and order. He doesn't do things and then no, I should have done that before then. He plans, and so those of everything that we can just walk into any year without plan, the will of God is going to be done. He doesn't really work like that. That's the great man of God. Maurice Serulo, the great man of God of blessed memory. Many years ago, he launched the one billion souls to see. And they began to be paid. They raise money, they trade locals so that they can reach billions for the, for the gospel. They plan and they prepare, and then they move towards it. So planning and preparation is very, very, very important. important. Everything revolves around light. So as soon as he created the heavens and the earth, he spoke the light into existence. When he told the Israelites to borrow from the Egyptians, he had a place of worship in mind. As soon as they got into the wilderness, God told Moses, tell the Israelites, those who are willing to give a free will offering, that the jewels they borrowed from the Egyptians to surrender some of them for us to build a temple unto the Lord for worship. And the Bible says that people came until they were told that, look, what you are giving is enough. So when God told them, borrow from the Egyptians, jewels, silver, gold, and all those things, he had a temple in mind. He didn't come to the place and say, we need a temple. Said, what do we do? Before they came to the place where they needed a temple, he had already made plans of preparation for it. So God is also a great God of plan and preparation. This is also another very interesting story in, in, in the life of the Israelites when they left Egypt. Exodus chapter 13 and verse number 17. The Bible says, And it came to pass, when Pharaoh had let the people go, that God led them not through the way of the land of the Philistines, although that was near, for God said, Let's peradventure the people repent when they see war and they return to Egypt. Even though they didn't go through that place. Look at the way that people murmured and complained, want to go back to Egypt. But God knew that they were not ready for war. These were people who had been slaves, they had been in servitude. They didn't know how to fight, they are not trained, they were not skilled in fighting or anything. They were just coming out. If they begin to see war, they may know. So God, in his wisdom, he planned in such a way that he would take them in a particular journey so that they don't see anything that will discourage or frustrate them and prevent them from desiring to go to where he wants them to go. So God is a perfect God of plan and preparation. So I also have stated that spend time in prayer and fasting to see the Lord's face and to know his mind and his will for the coming year. Very, very important. Because God knows the end from the beginning. So if you spend time in prayer and fasting, I know the year is almost ended, but you can still do it. And say, Lord, what, what do you want me to do? What do you have for me for the coming year? How do I go to the, how will I navigate through the, the coming year? Lord, give me the GPS for the coming year so that I can go through without obstacles. So I, I, don't, I don't get into what we call a, a, a dead end or a cold desire. If I don't have God's plan, if I don't have God's GPS, if I'm not careful, I will get into a, a dead end. 
And then I have to come back all the way and start all over again. But if God GPS is leading me, he knows where there are dead ends and you take me out. But it takes prayer to do it. So number one, in preparation, plan and set goals. Plan the coming year. Plan them and set goals. Some people think that you don't need to set goals. You don't need to plan. God is a God of plan. God is a God of purpose. Let's look at what he said in, 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 in Luke chapter 14. We're going to start from verse number 28. Say, for which of you intending to build a tower, sit it not down first, and count up the cost, whether he have sufficient to finish it. So you are going to build a tower. Why would you sit down and count the cost? This is what I want to do. Am I able to do it? Say, which of, for which of you intending to build a tower, sit it not down first, and count up the cost, whether he have sufficient to finish it. Luke chapter 14, verses 28 onwards. Luke 14, 28 onwards. Verse 29 says, Let's happily, after he have laid the foundation, and is not able to finish it, all that behold it begin to mock him. Verse number 30. Saying, this man began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king going to, war, going to make war against another king, Sit down down first and consult him whether he be able with ten thousand to meet with uh, to meet him that cometh against him with twenty thousand. So all these are preparation. We plan and then we get him to be. So you need to plan into the coming year. What do you want to do? Otherwise, the year will end and you find yourself being where you are, or the, the year will end, you find yourself being going in cycles or cycles. So you say, ah, this thing happened to me last year, and this year I'm here. But we plan. People who buy houses, they plan. They sell towards it and then they buy houses. People who buy cars, marriage, everything. We all plan. We set goals. I want to marry by this time. I'm making, I'm making investment. And then I move towards it. Businesses do it. Everybody, at the end of the year, businesses, they, want, they set financial goals. They've set all those things. They have their financial year. They have their end of year. They plan towards it. And then they move towards it. They just don't move from one place to the other. And unfortunately, most of us Christians, just go through life like that without proper planning. And it's not healthy. So I ask a question. If I had the power to go to be anywhere I want, where would I be by the end of 2022? If you had the power, where would you be? If you are not thinking about it, it means that you have not even planned for the coming year. Or you don't even know where you want to go. So if you had the power to be anywhere, where would you want to be? I'm not talking about a dream vacation, a, 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 a dream place to live. I'm talking about achievement. I'm talking about success. I'm talking about setting goals and overcoming them. I'm talking about self-improvement, in, 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 what, adding to your self-worth or to your self-confidence or, or whatever, or, or being effective in the kingdom of God or being effective in your community. If you had the power to be anywhere you want, where will it be by the end of 2022? Where will you be? There's this great tennis star, I like her very much, her name is Serena Williams. The coach said at the beginning of every year, the kind of goals that she set for herself. And for, for a long time, every year, she set goals, I want to have the career grand slam, I want to win all the major champions, I want to win major, major competitions. She sets the goals. She never got to achieve them, but every year she still sets them. And she moves towards them. And that's what motivates her, and inspires her to move on. So, if I had a chance to say, or I had the power to say, at the 2022, where would I be? Or what would I want to be? Where would you like to be? And that's it. And now, the point I want to also make here is that you have power to get there. By the grace of God, you have power to get there. You have power to get to the place or the goals that you have set. When God, God has a goal, some people say God has not really planned it, doesn't have any goal. God has a goal. God wants the whole world to be saved. The Bible says, no willing that any man should perish, but all should come to repentance. Is that God's goal? That's what God wants. We all know that not everybody is going to be saved because people are going to reject God. But as for God, this is what I want. This is my goal. So he does that. He sets a goal. He has a goal. He wants all men to be saved. That no man comes to uh, 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 perish. Nobody perish. Everybody comes to salvation. It's God's goal. So there's nothing wrong with us setting, also setting goals. 
Jesus had a goal to reach the world. So he put in place a plan to reach the world with salvation. How did he do it? He chose 12 disciples. After praying all night, he chose 12 disciples because his goal was to reach the world. But he knew he couldn't do it by himself. He needed people to do it. So he chose 12 disciples out of the 70. And out of all the people following him, he chose 12 specific disciples to train them, to equip them. He spent three and a half years training them. How? By teaching them, by demonstrating the power of God to them. He healed the sick. He cursed the fig tree. He did so many things. He commanded the winds to be still, the storms to be still. He showed them power. He demonstrated it to them. He trained them, gave them practical training. He demonstrated the power of God to them. He gave them practical lessons. He rebuked them when they went wrong. He encouraged them. He taught them faith. The Bible says that he borrowed Simon's sheep. And after he had finished preaching, he taught Simon that, look, anybody who serves God, who invests his life into God, will not return empty. So after preaching, he told Simon, launch into the deep. Simon said, Lord, you don't know what you're talking about. Because if you have talked all night, there is no fish here. You can't get fish here. Where you, the boat, where you, the boat is, you can't get fish there. He said, but nevertheless, at your word. And then they cast the net. And after they cast the net, the Bible says that there are so much fish that their net began to break. So they have to call others to help them. And the Bible says that the fish was so much that when they began to blow them into two sheaves, the sheaves began to sink. The point was clear. Jesus was telling Peter, if you surrender your life to me, if you give your life to me, if you give me your sheep for me to use to preach or to do the gospel, I will also bless you. And I'll give you more than what you gave me. So he taught them. And then before he left, he told them, I'm praying the Father that you give me another comfort, that somebody to be with you. And then you receive power. So he, he said the power, he said, pray to the Father to empower them. And then he commissioned them to preach to the world. So his goal was to save the world, but that was how it was going to be. The Godhead have plans, and they moved towards it. And calendar months are to help us plan and organize our lives. So if you have come to the end of December, you need to look back at your life. What have I achieved this year? Where am I? Am I down? Am I up? Or am I higher? And am I where God wants me to be? But just don't, we just don't walk into... January to February, and then from December to another January for 2021, and we are excited. No, 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 we enter with plan and purpose. And God has given us calendar months to help us organize our life because God doesn't need that. He exists in eternity. He's not controlled by time. But we are controlled by time. So seasons like this are times that God has given to us to, pl to plan and to prioritize our lives and to put things in place that will help us become better than who or how we were before the year began. So, the end of a period is for stop taking, taking corrective measures and improving upon past performance. So as a ministry, we have to look at ourselves. How did we fail? What did we do? What did we do right? What did we do wrong? Where were we up? Where were we down? We do that as a ministry. We do that as individuals. Governments also do that. They lose elections. They sit down and they are, why do we lose the elections? And then they plan, pick up a new strategy. So <coughs> you also, you look into your life. And then you pick up a new strategy, you take, a, you take stock. Maybe your prayer life was not very effective. Maybe you already spending much time in the Bible. Maybe you already spending time fasting and praying. Maybe you, were, you, you lost focus and that began to drift around. Or maybe you spent time doing other things. Or maybe you didn't spend your money wisely. These are things that you ask yourself. And so when you get into the new year, you put corrective measures. And all these things you do with a pen and paper. Don't just paint them. And it's stated categorically here. God knows the end from the beginning. So if you stay in his will, you cannot fail. You may make mistakes, but you cannot fail. Why? Because he knows the end from the beginning. And because he knows from the end from, end from the beginning, if he sets you on this particular path, he is knows, he is sure you'll get to your destination. Hallelujah. Amen. Number two, in your preparation for the coming year, deal with the leakages. Deal with the leakages. Man of God told this beautiful story. 
that is not as beautiful as I'm trying to say, but it's, it's a very nice story. His wife's car, car tire began to leak. And he said, what I did was that, I said, okay, if I go to the gas station, that's what we all do. When the tire begins to leak, if I go to the gas station, instead of just pumping, let's say, 32 PSI, I'm going to make it 43 PSI. So he said, I'll do it. And then by the end of the day, the tire has leaked again. And all he needed to do was to buy a new tie or to go to the Volcanizer and let it be fixed. But this was what he was doing. And that's the story of most, most of us. Our ties are leaking. Tire or tie? Huh? Tire. Well, tire, right? Okay, tire. Car tire. Okay. They are leaking. So we need to send them to the Volcanizer and fix them. So what is the leakage in your life? Where are the leakages? What is the source of leakage in my life? What are the things that make me lose the power, lose the anointing, lose the presence of God? Or even lose money? I receive money and before I realize it's gone. What are the sources of leakage in my life? Or leakages in my life? Another thing that you, mean, you have to ask yourself is, what do I have to get rid of to run faster as a Christian? Or to move faster in, in life? The weight. I've seen on TV, read books, seen on TV several times where people have gone so much into credit card debt and then there are specialists who come. They come to their closet and say, they're going to help you get back. They go to their closet. There are so many clothes that these women have which still have the label and they are not even wearing them and yet they are in credit card debt. So what do they do? They try to uh, sell, help them sell them. They organize a sale. They sell them and then they are able to raise money to help them pay off their credit so that their credit will be in good standing. The point I'm making is that what are the weights in your life? First, you talk about leakage. Things that are in your life that make you lose things that come to you. Or lose the presence of God in your life. Or lose the power, the anointing in your life. What are those things? Those are leakages. But what are the weights? Weights don't help you to run fast as a Christian. They slow you down. My weight can be anger. You know the Bible says that be angry but do not sin. So you don't say that anger is sin. But if you have a, a problem with anger, it's going to slow you down. You get angry, it will take you a long time before you, 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 you're okay. It's going to slow you down. Very sensitive, you're hurt, and then you redraw for some time. It's going to slow you down. These are weights or habits. What character, what attitude, what behavior should I put away? These are all things that leak the, leak the anointing, leak the blessings, leak the breakthroughs. They leak them out of our lives. Physical things and spiritual things. And we need to ask God for grace and strength to deal with them. I'm still talking about preparation. Then deal with the circles and cycles in your life. What is making me go round in circles and cycles? Probably there's something in my life God wants me to let go of, and I'm holding on to it. They said, when they want to catch the monkey, they know that the monkeys are very smart. They can jump from one tree to the other. They, the hunters know that there's no way they can catch the monkeys. The monkeys have only one weakness. They put a jar with a small opening. And then the monkeys dip their hands in the jar, and they put nuts in the jar. So when the monkeys dip their hands in the jar, and pick the nuts, they are not smart enough to let them know that if they want to bring their hands out of the jar, they need to release the nuts. So because they don't want the nuts to leave their hands, they don't want to let go of the nuts, they hold on to the nuts in the jar. Because they don't want to release the nuts that they have gained. And so their hands will be with the nuts in the jar, and they can't bring it out because the mouth of the jar or, or pot is so small, and then they'll be, they'll be caught. And that's how hunters are able to catch monkeys. Simple. So what are you holding on to that has made you get stuck? That because of that, you can't bring your hand out of the jar. What is that not? And these are the things. They make us go around in circles and cycles. You go and then before you realize, you are back where you started because there is something that is so dear to you, but not that dear to God, that you need to let go. And somebody said that, as a child of God, I must hate what God hates and love what God loves. So what is your life that needs that God hates that you need to let go? But you still like it.
because you feel weak, you feel unable to deal with them, and you need to let them go so that you can go on to your next level, so that you don't go on in circles and cycles. We are getting into a new year, and God uses these times to inspire us. When the Israelites were having their, their anniversaries, their, their, their feasts, he makes them celebrate it, he makes them enjoy it. Why? Because they have worked so hard back home in Africa. They are going to call the Yam Festival and all kinds of festivals in my country or in, in some, sorry, in parts of Africa or West Africa. They have certain cultures. What do you do in those festivals? It's a time of celebration. They forget about what they are told. And then they are inspired to launch into the next season. So God makes them celebrate their feast. They go feast of Pentecost, feast of this, feast of that. They celebrate. And they forget about the past, and then they launch into the new. It's a season of refreshing. So we are getting to December. Christmas is here. We are all excited. We are getting to the end of the year. Everyone is grateful. Finally, I'm getting to the end of the year. But the end is always a beginning. Every end is a beginning. Hallelujah. Every end is a beginning. So once we end December 31st, we are getting to 1st January. It's a new year. So how do I end so that I can get into the new year stronger, better than how I lived in the past year. And these are the things that you need to now take a pen and a notebook. Buy it if you don't have one. Take a pen and a notebook and write. This was the area. This. This took my time. My food. My TV. My friends. My relationships. My time and work. I, I mean, social media is here, so sometimes they add things. But Somebody wrote on social media and he said, My wife has been going to the gym for the past six months and she's not losing weight. So now she puts he puts a picture on, on, on the on, on the on the social media platform. And that the, it was simply that anytime the wife goes to the gym, the wife has another friend. So they'll stand on the treadmill and they'll talk and talk and talk and talk, and then the time will go and then she'll come home. So she goes to the gym alright, but she doesn't exercise. So what is something that you need to let go? So that God can also bless you. So that your life don't go in circles and cycles. The Bible says of the Israelites, he said, you have been going around this mountain for so long. Turn not over. What should I let go? What should I release? So I can move on to my next level, to the glory of God. Hallelujah. Now I want to touch on this briefly because uh, I can't finish it and I don't want to uh, treat it halfway. Um, I talked about uh, things, keys that we need. And this is the key of preparation. Take a notebook. Write your plan. Write your purpose. After prayer, after much prayer, after spending time, say, Lord, give me wisdom. Show me what I need to do in the coming years. So after prayer, the Holy Spirit will speak to you. How does He speak? He will speak a desire in your heart. He will speak a desire through maybe watching a TV program or watching, hearing a sermon or reading a portion of the scripture. He will, he will inspire you to do something. So after prayer, you write. Set your goal. It could be three, it could be four, it could be five. It could be just one, but it's all, en all encompassing. So it encompasses everything. So you just set that goal. Say, this is what I'm going to do. This is how I'm going to do it. Football, footballers do it. All athletes do it. They set goals. Coaches do it for their teams. They set goals. Pastors do it for the church. They set goals. <coughs> and that's what motivates us. Now, let me just touch this, mention it. The next one is your mouth. Your mouth is not just an organ for you to eat and to drink. Your mouth is an organ that determines whether you live or you die. And the Bible says that death and life are in the power of the tongue. And they that love you shall eat the food of it. And there are so many things that the Bible says about the tongue. But then I realized that, or from the Bible, we can understand that the tongue is related to the mind. And the heart. Because what you think about is what you say. But what is in your heart? The Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaking. So if you're going to talk about the mouth, then we need to deal with the heart and we need to deal with the mind. So what are the results of your heart? What are the things that are in your heart? What are the things that are in your mind? And that's what we are going to focus on the next time we meet. And I encourage you, please read as much as you can and let the Lord speak to you. We are talking about stepping into a new year, stepping into 2022. How you get into it? The key is preparation. Preparation is key for success. Preparation will make the work easier. 
that you put less effort that will achieve much. Without preparation, you put in much effort, you achieve less. With preparation, less effort, but you achieve much. And I pray that God will bless us and have a very fruitful coming year in 2022. Our goal for the year is recovering what we have lost and taking new territories. And we have to plan towards it. God richly bless you. Amen. 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 Can we can we share a word of prayer? And well, it's all those of us in this room tonight, you just want to pray. Just want to pray and say, Lord, am I, I, I I'm God, I'm, I maybe I'm just getting to the year. For I just just getting to the year like a regular. I said there's nothing happening. But it's a new year. Twelve calendar months. Organizations are preparing, teams are preparing, groups are preparing. And as an individual, what am I doing for me to reap the best out of the coming year? You see, Lord, if I'm not preparing, Lord, forgive me. But I'm praying, Lord God, in these 16 days that are left before we step, or 15 days that are left before we get into the new year, make it very clear to me, make it very plain. And take a look when ideas occur to you, right? Some of us will wake up early in the morning, wake up with ideas, dreams. You have a notebook, you write them. Visions, you write them. Ideas. Before you talk to anybody, before you move around, sometimes some ideas occur to you. You write them. And then you take steps to fulfill them. Father, we thank you for your word. We give you glory, we give you honor, we give you praise. You want us to be above only and not beneath. You want us to be successful, you want us to be on, to be on top. Lord Jesus lived a successful life upon the face of this earth. We are read about the apostles, they were successful. After they were endued with the power of the Holy Ghost, they achieved success, they achieved greatness. They were not just regular, ordinary people. That is your will for us, that's your desire for us. I'm asking for your grace and mercy for us to live that life that is above, be holy and, and above, holy and not beneath, to your glory, to your honor, and to your praise. I thank you and I give you glory in Jesus' name. 